So what if I told you there's a way to see each device, each plugin in your session view or in your mixer view inside of Ableton 10? What? Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you a really cool, really helpful, kind of a game-changing hidden feature inside of Ableton. One of the biggest knocks about with Ableton is that it lacks a lot of the conventional, kind of traditional features of other DAWs. So when you come from another DAW, like I did from Logic, it drives you wild. It, it, it literally makes you want to just bang your head against the wall because certain features that should just be there that are kind of there, but they aren't really there, and it's it's maddening. So one of those is being able to see the plugins, the devices on each track or channel in your session view, which is where your mixer is, right? So in most, if you guys have never used another DAW, most other traditional DAWs like Logic or Pro Tools, you have a mix view where you can see your mixer, right? It looks like an analog mixer sometimes. And on that, you can see all the plugins on each track and you can obviously see gain, volume, pan, all that sort of stuff. So you can see some of that in Ableton, but again, not all of it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can see and basically turn on a hidden feature so you can see all the devices on the channel. So let's dive into Ableton and get started. All right, so I've opened up a session and what we're looking at right now, this is called the arrangement view in Ableton. This is where most of you guys probably spend most of your time while you're making your tracks, making your beats, making your bangers, right? So if you hit tab on your keyboard or go up here and click this button or this icon, you'll be looking at what's called the session view. And this is where the session view is where Ableton really got to start as a live performance tool. You have clips and you have a basic mixer down here. Now, the reason why I say basic mixers, the way that Ableton has evolved over the years is it started out as a live performance tool and then once people started using it as an actual DAW, Ableton realized, okay, let's flesh out the more, you know, the kind of more standard DAW side of Ableton. And as you know, the versions have, have uh, come, and, come and gone, we've gotten a much deeper workflow in the arrangement view. But in this view, it's still, it's still pretty weird if you compare it to other DAWs. And I'm not saying other DAWs have it perfect or you know, they, they do it you know, they, the way that it's done historically is the right way to do it. It's just weird that Ableton gives you this mixer, but you also can't see what devices are on each channel and each track, which is a little bit weird. So for instance, if I hit play on this track, I have a bass track right here. I don't know what's making this bass track until I click it. So it's just weird that you have a bird's eye view of everything that's going on, but you still don't have a real true bird's eye view because I have to click it and see you know, the device. Now it also, if you have a very bloated of, uh, or just a really uh, you know, deep track count, you have like 40, 50, 60, 70 tracks, whatever it might be, Finding it all in the arrange view can in the arrange, in the uh, arrangement view can be a pain in the ass, especially if you have you know like groups and groups in groups. So what's nice is you can go to this tab view and just see what's going on, especially when you can see the actual plugins and the things that are you know the devices that are on each track. So over here at the right, I have an icon that you probably do not have currently. It's this little plugin. It looks like a little plug into an outlet. If I click it, it will show me all of the devices on each track. So I can see that I have Serum. A LFO tool instance of an LFO tool that's not active compressor, right? Uh, I can hit play, turn things off, turn them on, A, B, them, see which one I like more. But then also just finding everything is now super easy because I can be like, okay, where's that? Where's that serum base or where's that silent base, right? I can now not. I don't have to rely on the name of my track up here. I can actually rely on the name of the plugin itself. So it's a lot easier to find. All right. So how do you do it? Well, you have to go into uh, the the preferences section in your computer for Ableton Live. And from there, you have to edit or create a options.txt file. And that allows you to tell Ableton to do, do certain things that are technically not supported features. They're kind of hidden features. So I've pulled up, if we go to uh, Chrome here, I've pulled up where each location is for both Windows and Mac users. Sorry, Linux users, I don't even know how to help you there. So with uh, Windows, it's right here. Uh, with Mac, I'm on a Mac, so I'll just show you how to do it in this video. It's it's right here. So if you don't have a options.txt file, just make a text file in your text editor and then save it as capital O for options.txt file. It's right here. It should look like this. All right, so let's go to Finder now, and I should already be there. So you're going to see a ton of different live versions, uh, different versions of Ableton Live in my Ableton preference folders. Mainly that's because I'm on the beta team for Ableton, so that's why you see all these. So you're probably not going to have this many, so don't worry about it. I would suggest putting your new options file in the oldest version for the current version you're on. So if you're on version 10, put it in 10.0.1 as well as the newest version. So if you've updated it all, or if you have you have auto update set or whatever it might be, put it in there as well. So you can see here I have the options.txt file, and this is what you need to type 
in the options.txt file. Show device slots and make sure capital S, capital D, capital S. So capitalize every word basically in this. And then hit save on that. Put it in the oldest, newest folder. Reopen Ableton. And then when you do, go to your session view and you should have this icon here. And now Ableton has a much more conventional mixer. You can see your devices, you can see your plugins, you can see your effects. All right, guys, that's going to sum things up. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do, smash that notification bell so you get an update when we release a new video. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.